Tava essentially is a storyteller, an historian. He's tasked with the job of telling the stories of the people, for the people, through design, through Fakairo. I wanted to become a doctor, yeah. And uh, I was really disappointed when I was asked to go and uh, help carve Tapika through my apprenticeship. And I thought to myself, why me? I'm not interested in that. <laughs> For Uncle Rangi Hetit to have been chosen back in the 50s as the youngest carver to carve these treasures of ours. Carving does not exist alone, just as a skill. It exists within a whole body of knowledge, and that body of knowledge exists and is held by a whole community of people, by a whole nationhood of people. And so what Mum and Dad would do, don't be restricted by what you know or by what materials you have in front of you. If you don't know how to put it together, go and learn. With my dad's work, there is a grace about it, I suppose. There's a very beautiful patina to the work. There's a beautiful curve. It's a softness and a balance. And they welcome people with the poi. That's the figure here, representing the women. The top figure there is what they call a ruru, and the ruru is the wise elder, wise person. Unfortunately, all those carvers have since passed on, and Rangi is one of the very few remaining with that knowledge and that mode of tuition that he received. As um, Rangi would say, he's still learning. I know you find it hard to believe, but um, if he's still learning, I'm right down, sort of right down the bottom layer here, <laughs> you know. To pass that on to your students, to your sons, the same way that you were taught, is quite an important, for me anyway, it's quite important to do that. That brings the people together, whether it be Waka meeting houses, you know, the people, they rally together 